the last episode, I told you about the fact that I'm getting a Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt uh, from Octopus Electric Vehicles, and that was going to be part of the Power Loop trial. Now, I think it's worth just taking a bit more time to talk about what Power Loop is and um, how I got involved, and then, you know, what's actually going to happen to the house in order to uh, get that all going. So the way I got to know about Powerloop was just purely by accident. Um, I was browsing online and I saw a link to Octopus Electric Vehicles and I started to get really, really excited because this particular trial was being done in conjunction with UK Power Networks. Now, I know that's probably not going to excite many people, but the reason I was excited by that was because um, they are the local distribution network operator for my area, which means that I was eligible to take part in this trial. So what's a distribution network operator? Well, it kind of is what it is. Um, they are responsible for the power distribution network in a given area of the UK. So this is all split up, different companies, um, and they are the responsible for all of the uh, wires and transformers going from the power stations to your house. And in fact, at your house, they're responsible all the way up to the electricity meter and your electricity meter is then owned by your energy provider and then everything from there on is yours. So this meant that I could apply for this trial um, and get involved and I was really excited about that because um, I had seen OVO Energy uh, were doing uh, something around um, vehicle to grid a little while ago um, but I was really excited by the opportunity of actually being able to get involved myself. So I signed up and, and, and if you go down here on the Octopus Electric Vehicles website, you can um, register your interest. You can still register your interest in this today. And what then will happen is uh, you'll check your postcode and all of that kind of stuff just to make sure that uh, you are in the right uh, you know, operator's territory. Once that all comes back good, you'll be asked for a ton of information about where your house is. You'll have to take a satellite photo of your house from Google Maps and stick it into a, a form. You'll have to take some pictures of your fuse boards. You'll have to take some pictures of the um, incoming supply into your house. Um, just a whole load of things. So there's actually quite a lot of admin work to do. And the reason that they're doing this is obviously because they want to make sure that there's no kind of uh, hidden problems that are going to be highlighted by uh, your taking part in this trial. So, of course, one of the one of the things that you need to basically make sure is that your uh, home can you know, take a vehicle to grid charger, um, much like if you're applying for the uh, electric vehicle grant uh, for the um, uh, just a standard charger you need to just basically make sure you've got the the right size fuse uh, in your um, incoming supply so your incoming supply um, uh, has a has has different fuses potentially depending on when your house was made so um, you can't just sort of change that fuse because that fuse is normally um, associated with the size of the cabling uh, coming in from the street so uh, for example, in this house, um, we've got 100 amp fuse, which is the, the highest, um, I believe, that you can get uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a domestic uh, supply. Even if you have a three phase installation, it's normally three 100 amp uh, fuses on each phase, uh, but it gives you 300 amps in total. So the next step in this trial for me is that we're now waiting for the leaf to arrive. I've got a delivery date um, in the next couple of weeks, which is great will then be able to charge that car using the Zappi charger that we've already got. Now, the vehicle to grid part of this requires a different charger to go on the wall. Now, this is actually one of the problems I can see with vehicle to grid technology right now. Uh, if I just go to the website, you'll see um, that at the very bottom is the, uh, is the information uh, on the charger itself. 
and it is a Wallbox Quasar. Now those chargers have just received a huge amount of press and publicity at CES in Las Vegas, which is the consumer electronics show that happens every January out in Las Vegas. Now that um, is really exciting actually because it's great to be you know, uh, taking part in something where one of these uh, award-winning uh, devices is going to be fitted to, to my house. So let's just go back and talk about what vehicle to grid is and the benefits. A vehicle to grid is a technology which allows an electric car to push energy back into the grid. Now the main reason that this is a really really good thing is because the grid is supported by different types of electricity generation. Now about 30 miles up the road from us here is Sizewell B. Um, actually, it's Sizewell A and Sizewell B. Sizewell A was decommissioned and is in the process of decommissioning. Sizewell B is uh, still an active nuclear reactor. Now, the thing about nuclear power is you can't just switch it off and on again. So if lots of people start using electricity, you can't bring on more nuclear power. You use your nuclear power uh, to support the base load uh, of the country. The flexible generation comes from gas, pro predominantly comes from gas uh, generation. Now, the problem with gas is it's a fossil fuel, and so we don't really want to have as much of that in the grid if we can absolutely help it. So where electricity uh, supply is peaky, we want to start to either remove that peaky demand from the grid altogether and just end up with a very flat base load um, or we want to have very fast responsive renewable sources of electricity storage that can very quickly fill the gap in uh, generation demand. So traditionally what would happen is at six o'clock in the evening everyone comes home they start cooking the dinner uh, using their ovens, uh, making tea with their kettles, and that starts to draw a huge amount of demand um, from the grid. Now then, a gas fire power station within your local area will start generating electricity to pick up um, and support that demand. Now, in a vehicle to grid scenario, people who have just arrived home in their electric cars and start to switch on their ovens, kettles, etc will then start to support their own demand, but potentially also support the demand of their neighbours as well. So they reckon that um, 10 Nissan Leafs could support the electrical demand for 1,000 homes, which is quite um, remarkable if you think about it. In the future, the idea is that if there are more electric vehicles, then the mass of electric vehicles can provide as a distributed power supply uh, electricity into the grid, meaning that actually the amount of power needed from each individual vehicle is quite small. So instead of gas power stations filling this demand gap, the idea is that a whole load of vehicles across the country can start to fill that gap instead. And it's already been proven that this is possible with grid scale, battery storage. You've seen articles I'm sure on the grid scale electric storage in Australia. Uh, Elon Musk's Tesla uh, storage system there uh, being able to respond immediately to um, demand uh, for uh, electricity. So the theory is very sound. The testing is all about how it works in practice with lots and lots and lots of little uh, storage batteries all over the place in people's cars and then also of course how the people i.e. me think about that so if it completely ruins my experience of having a Nissan Leaf then clearly it's not going to be something that I want to be a part of and therefore I won't submit to having power taken from the car if I don't notice it at all and my bills go down as a result of it then actually I'll be all for it. But this is what the trial's all about. So it'd be really interesting to see. Some of the drawbacks of vehicle to grid right now is the fact that 
it needs CHAdeMO and that connector type is by no means universal. So most people when they're charging a new electric car at home will be charging using a type two connector. And that provides an AC power supply into the car and the car has an inverter inside the car that then converts that to DC to charge the battery. Now with CHAdeMO and CCS, they're both DC charging standards, which basically means you're plugging directly into the battery itself and charging it directly, so no inverters required. With vehicle to grid, the CHAdeMO standard has vehicle to grid in mind, so arguably it's one of the most advanced standards out there. It's just not well supported in Europe. Most European manufacturers have gone for CCS. Now, there is vehicle to grid technology in the CCS standard, but it's not currently ready yet. So only cars with CHAdeMO, which means basically the Nissan Leaf and I think a couple of others can support the vehicle to grid um, in theory. Now in actuality, I think there's only actually two CHAdeMO cars that can actually do vehicle to grid today, the Nissan Leaf and uh, a Mitsubishi, I believe. That's not great because not everyone's gonna wanna buy a Nissan Leaf. So we've really got to see uh, a much better standardization of connectors and also the technology that those connectors can support. So the vehicle to grid technology needs to be supported across as many connectors as is feasibly possible. As early adopters, I can see many, many wall boxes in our future until those standards kind of work themselves out, which is a bit of a shame, but you know, Betamax and DVDs and HD DVDs and Blu-rays and you know, standards things take a long time to get sorted. And actually when you're trying to push on with something, it's, it just makes sense to select one, go with it, see how it works. And then if it does work, then worry about the rest of it later. Because if it doesn't work, there's no point. That comes on to the next problem that we have with vehicle to grid. We cannot use our current Zappi charger to do this. And therefore we need the uh, wall box Quasar to come along, which is great. But if you think about these two chargers, uh, they are both seven kilowatt chargers, which means they will each consume 32 amps of electricity. So 64 amps is getting very, very close to the 100 amp supply that we have feeding this house. And by 100 amp supply, I mean that if we exceed 100 amps at any given point, the fuse that sits on the DNO's equipment will melt and then we will be without power. So clearly that's not something we, we want to do. And theoretically anyway, it is possible that we could exceed that 100 amps. And that might mean that we're not allowed by the DNO to actually have both our Zappi charger and the new Quasar charger on our house installed and able to operate at the same time. Now, depending on the solution that we can come up with around this, um, you know, that might be a bit of a problem. Uh, so if we have to completely remove the Zappi, that means we can't charge the Zoe because the Zoe doesn't have CHAdeMO. It only has a type two connector. We'll be able to charge the Leaf because that has a type two and a CHAdeMO connector, obviously. In a worst case scenario, we might have to go back to a granny cable for the Zoe and so that we can have the seven kilowatt Quasar charger take the place of the Zappi. The only alternative I can see to that is if the two chargers can be fed from the same supply and placed on a switch so that you can switch between the Zappi and the Quasar depending on what you want to do. Now, obviously in our case, what would that would mean is that once a week, we'd have to flip a switch, charge the Zoe and flip it back for most of the time, because then we'll be wanting to use the vehicle to grid technology continuously. 
uh, to you know, keep our bills down, power the house from the car, and generally take part in the trial. So that's a, a bit of an unknown. That's something that's going to come out in the next few weeks. Um, we, as I say, we will get the car first, we will charge using the Zappi, and then Octopus Electric Vehicles will come in and fit the, uh, fit the new charger. And I think there'll be a degree of working this out as we go. Interestingly, talking to the guys at Octopus Electric Vehicles, the, this isn't a unique problem to us. So many, many people that are taking part in this trial are pre-existing EV owners you know, because they're aware of, you know, this whole thing. Um, they are the sorts of people that are be becoming interested in this technology. So as the trial rolls out, um, they will have to find these solutions uh, to these problems. And actually, if vehicle to grid technology is going to kind of have its own standard for, for, for a longer time, then actually I think that will probably stifle the adoption of it and it will certainly make it a much more expensive um, thing to do. So we shall see. But that is a quick video on vehicle to grid, what's going to happen here in the house and um, the kind of general why vehicle to grid is a good idea in the first place. So I hope that's been interesting for you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Hopefully in the next video we can get the car all settled in here and um, take it out for a drive and stuff. Um, and then in the next couple of weeks we'll have this, the actual charge point itself installed and we can see what kind of fun and games uh, have to happen here to actually make that happen. But that's all to come. So thanks for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz. Um, but yeah, see you in the next one.